Hi, this is Erika Kassab from Small Robot Studio with a new tutorial on Nomad Sculpt, a 3D sculpting app for tablet users. Today we'll have a quick look at the Tube tool. Its name is pretty self explanatory, it creates long cylindrical geometries. This tool is great when sculpting branches, blocking out legs, arm, fingers, tentacles, and of course for creating here. Let's have a look at how it works. When you select it and tap on the screen, it seems like nothing is happening because you gotta choose a creation method. The first one, curve, is a freehand stroke, so you can draw a curve of any shape that you want. If you're using this freehand method, I recommend going into the stroke menu for the line stabilizer features. We have lazy rope and stroke smoothing. If none of these are active, your lines might look wobbly and not that very controlled. But if you play with these values, it's gonna let you achieve much nicer results. In general, cleaner lines. I personally like to have the lacy rope quite low and stroke smoothing a little bit higher. If you're not using a stylus, you might wanna have higher values. As you can see, after you created your curve, you're gonna see a lot of dots. These are control points, which will let you edit your curves. You can change this curve by simply tapping and dragging these points. If you wanna delete any, simply grab it and drag it into one of its closest point. By default, these points are gonna give you a curve, but if you tap once of them, they're gonna turn black and give you a corner. To make them a curve, simply tap on them again. If you want to add a point, just tap in the line between two points. You might experience while you're working with a tube that you accidentally click on another mesh and this point disappears. Right now I have this sphere selected. Don't worry, if you tap again on your tube, those points are going to be back. As long as you haven't hit the validate button, you will be able to edit this at any point. You can go and edit any other mesh, any other object, and then come back and edit these points again. As soon as you hit validate, this is gonna be baked in, so you will not be able to do any change afterwards. And speaking of this top menu, let's review these tools that we have here. The very first one, snap, is gonna make these points stick to an existing surface. As you can see, I have this flattened sphere behind this. I'm gonna put this in front, activate it, move it just slightly, a couple of these points, and as you can see, they have sticked to this surface. Let's make them curve so they look a little bit nicer. If I don't activate it and I move a point, they're gonna move in relation to the camera, but they will not stick to that surface as they did before. If you tap on the option that says close, as you can guess from its name, it's gonna make this a closed loop. I'm gonna jump to the whole option. I'll be back to radius in a second. If I activate it, it's gonna turn this into a hollow tube. The next button, edit, is gonna hide temporarily these points. I can still bring them back and edit again, but let's say that maybe I'm adjusting this location by tapping on my gizmo, putting it a little bit lower to make the position nicer. And once I'm done with that, I can go back to tube and tap again on edit to continue modifying these shapes as I want them. The next option, spline, is gonna switch the location of the control points. Instead of being in the curve itself, they're gonna be outside. Spline is gonna give you much nicer curves with better flow, just much smoother and much more natural. Finally, the tool that I skipped, radius. This one is to define how thick or thin this tube is going to be. At the very start, you will see this yellow dot. If you drag it, it's gonna increase or decrease the thickness of this tube. If you tap once again radius, a new yellow point is gonna show up at the end of the curve, which means that I can set an initial radius and a different value at the end. If I tap once again, instead of having an initial and an end value, Every single point is gonna have its own radius control. 
This is one of the most useful features that comes with the tube tool. Hey, before I carry on, I want to take a moment to thank everyone who has supported the channel via Gumroad and especially to our Patreons. Thanks to you, we are able to bring you these videos for free every week. All our Patreons gain access to a growing library of 3D assets and resources. You can learn more about it at patreon.com slash smallrobotstudio. Let's carry on with the next tube creation method, path. You'll find it right below curve. Instead of using a freehand stroke, this time you need to tap to create each control point. While you're creating it, you can activate closed or spline to change the type of control point. Before actually creating the geometry, it's going to let you modify this curve. Once you're happy with this, you can tap on this green circle and it's going to create the mesh. I often found that the points disappear and I need to reselect this tube to start editing it. When creating using pad, I recommend going into the settings menu and select the snapping method to choose how this tube is going to behave in relation to any surface that's already on your canvas. If you choose start and end, only the very beginning or the end of your curve will stick to that existing surface. If you choose every point, well, then every single point is going to snap to that existing surface. I often only use path to create curves because I can control the amount of points. You can create the same shape with curve, but see how many more control points you get. I'd rather have less to have more control for editing. I'm going to turn on the topology by using this wire button button and I'm going to open the topology menu. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll notice that I always start with little topology, with as few polygons as possible. So I often go to this section, tube topology, and lower this number. You can do the opposite and add an even higher mesh. Also by using parameter, it's gonna let you subdivide that for higher resolutions. In this menu, you can also control the radius size, which can be useful if you want to use the specific numerical values. It will also let you control the radius of the hole if you decide to make this a hollow tube. This last option, Snap Offset, is gonna define where this tube is sticking to this geometry. At the moment, you can see that it's sticking right at the middle of the tube. Let's say I put this all the way up to 1, make sure that Snap is turned on, and move it slightly and see how now it's touching only at the edge. If I set it, let's say 2.6, and not quite in the middle, but not the edge either. Since we're already here, let me show you real quick how I use the tube tool to create hair. I'm gonna use this work in process model, and the first thing I wanna do is go into the scene menu and create a box. Nothing extraordinary, just a box because I want to have a flat surface where I'm going to make the first hair strand. Let's choose our tube tool, set it to every point, path, make only two points and create this. Let's turn on the wireframe, lower just a bit this resolution, it doesn't have to be extremely low. Set the radius to be different at the start and end. I'm gonna turn on snapping and set the snap offset to 1. Right now I don't need to modify this in the cube, but the last thing that I'm gonna do is choose my gizmo tool and flatten this out. I can bring it out a little bit. This is gonna be the base from which I create everything else. I can hide the wireframe now. I'm probably done with this cube, so I can hide it and even erase it. So again, with my gizmo, I'm gonna select this base mesh and I'm gonna tap on clone. And I'm gonna bring a copy of this into the face. When you're trying to use a gizmo, sometimes having the points can be annoying. Because you're trying to choose the arrow, but the point comes in the way. So I'm gonna tap on edit to hide them temporarily. I'm gonna position it roughly where I want it and move your control point. 
so it sticks to that surface. I can add another point. And the last point, I actually don't want it to stick to the surface because this is more like the hair is flowing. So there we go, one strand for her fringe or if you're American for the bangs. Let's create a clone and make another one. And here it's going to be very important that you rotate this to the surface. So at the very front it didn't really matter. I just had it horizontal like that. But because I have a little bit of curvature, it's going to work much better if I try to get it as perpendicular as possible to that curvature. I like to add two points at the start. So one is sort of buried for the origin of the hair and the other one flows out. Don't forget that if you choose spline, you're going to get much nicer curves. It takes a bit of patience, but this is absolutely worth it. Alright, that's it for me today. I look forward to see your creations. Happy sculpting! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.